this is my uh, one of my compressors in the shop. It's a uh, probably 65 or 70 years old. It's a Speed Air, uh, which was made by Granger. I bought it in around 1975 as a used compressor, two stage with a two horsepower motor on it, and uh, never had a problem with the compressor or the tank or anything. But I have had some issues with the motor because of uh, power failures. Um, back in, uh, I guess it was 2012, we had a power failure where one leg of the uh, 240 service went out and the compressor tried to start the it's a 220 switch so both legs disconnect but during the power failure it tried to start it couldn't but yet it completely melted um, and burned up the start capacitors on the motor and it's it's one of these old big let's see anyway about 10 days ago the same exact situation occurred we had a power failure one leg of the service went out I wasn't here it tried to start and uh, it, it burned up the the start capacitors again now I don't understand why that's happening since if sh there should be no current flowing through it if one leg is no longer connected um, I've checked the start windings for continuity and ground I've checked the run windings everything is fine there's no shorts to ground I can't find any shorts to ground in the shop but yet this is still occurring so if you have any ideas or theories as to why this might be happening I'd appreciate uh, you leave a comment and let me know now the other interesting thing is is that in 2012 when it happened the original start capacitors were on this motor and they were only rated at 125 volts even though this motor is a dual voltage and can run on 220 on 240 or 230 I'm not quite sure why they did that, but I've replaced them with the same uh, values as the uh, original capacitors. Now it takes about seven to eight hundred microfarads to get this motor to run. And the, the whole idea of what these start capacitors do, they're only in the circuit momentarily, not even a second. Uh, it's to cause a phase shift to get the the armature or the steer to begin turning and when it gets up to about 75 percent of its run speed the centrifugal switch in there takes the start winding out of the circuit so the capacitors really um, are not sitting there carrying you know 220, 220 volts all right we're going to take a look at the capacitors and uh, we're going to put them back in here and hopefully there's well I'm pretty sure there's no damage to the motor because I've checked it well, here's the, um, the tag off of the, the compressor. It's a uh, model 1Z940, two stage, two horsepower, single phase, and what's that say? Oh, rotation is counterclockwise. Uh, that label came off a long time ago. Uh, here's the specs on it. It uh, its displacement is 9.3 CFM. It produces 7.05 CFM at 175 psi, and I've actually checked that, and it's very close. Runs at 680 RPM, single phase, 115 230 volt. Model 1Z940. And when this uh, compressor was new, uh, you could buy it from Granger for $465. Now, that was probably, 
uh, I'm guessing 70 years ago because I bought this compressor used in um, 1975 and the compressor was probably uh, at least 25 to 35 years old when I purchased it and I've, I've never had a single problem with it except for uh, some motor issues due to uh, power failures so I right, we're going to test the uh, capacitors that came out uh, of the motor and we'll test the new ones. Now I need between 700 and 800 microfarads to start this compressor motor. So let me turn on the uh, my Klein ohmmeter and select capacitance all right now first let's let's see what the new capacitors are rated at three fifty one Right now, let's try the other one. All right, so here we're looking at 356.4, which is also right about, I guess, in the middle of the range. Well, a little on the low side, because this is, like I said, this is 340 to 408. All right. Now let's check the ones that came out of the motor. Eighteen point six. Obviously, very bad. And the other one, 27.87. So obviously these capacitors um, have been really damaged. Okay, All right, before I put the new capacitors back into the motor, and see if the motor itself has been damaged. Uh, I'm going to cut one of these open because I'm curious. Um, doesn't look like all that much dielectric leaked out of it, but obviously they got so overheated that something happened, and uh, I'd like to see what's inside. Here, anyway, I'm going to try to cut it open with a Dremel tool and a saw and see how we do. So, we got it open. I don't know, it's kind of dark in here, huh? Let's see if I can get this light here. See if we can't pop it out of here.
Well, yeah, it uh, looks like um, all of the dielectric, that tar, whatever the heck they use, has pretty much leaked out of this thing. But uh, let me see if we can't unroll it. I don't think you can. Now, there's really not much to see. Uh, the uh, it's just too dark in here, I'm sorry. But what this is, is it's basically two layers of foil, one connected to each terminal, and there's uh, a paper, which is also a dielectric, doesn't elect allow electricity to, to pass it, is laid between the, the two layers of foil, and then they roll this up to create the uh, capacitor. And when it breaks down or it gets so hot that all the, the dielectric leaks out of this thing, it shorts out. Or parts of it short out. And so it no longer has the capacitance that it's supposed to have. Okay. All right. I put the uh, two um, new capacitors together in series, um, excuse me, in parallel, and I'm just going to check to make sure that I'm in the range I'm supposed to be. I guess it takes a while to charge them up. Okay, here's the, the capacitors I'm going to put back in. They are connected in um, parallel. And basically, you, you can take more than one capacitor and connect them in parallel, and then you can add up the values in microfarads. So these are from 340 to 408 microfarads. So it, it's going to supply somewhere around uh, 700 to 800 microfarads to start it. Okay, let me put them back in the motor. Now I'm gonna I'll put the cover on and then we'll see if it starts up. Okay, I got the cover back on and I'm gonna throw the switch and keep my fingers crossed. I should mention that this compressor goes on at 120 PSI and it shuts off at 175 PSI. Um, and when I did the calculations on what this delivered at 120 PSI, I came out with 6.5 CFM. Um, they're saying, I believe it was 7.08. So I'm within a half a CFM at 120. Uh, PSI. So, okay. See you next time.